Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Angela. In today's video, I am sharing with you my last six Christmas DIYs, and then we can move on into other home decor, home renovations, other fun projects. I also wanna mention that in today's video, I am participating in the monthly Chic for Cheap Challenge put on by Christy from Christy Creates. And the co-host this month is Kristen from Kristen K. Both of these ladies have awesome channels, so be sure to check them out. I will have both of their channels as well as the playlist linked in the description box below. So be sure to check out all of the other creators. Let's head into the video. For this first decor dupe project, I am taking some of these wood plaques from the Dollar Tree along with these dowel rods that I got in a variety pack from Walmart. I'm using, um, I think like the medium sized dowel rods that come in there. You can get those same size ones at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to paint all of these pieces black. I used um, ink by Waverly. So I cut down my dowel rods. Oh, I'm sorry, they're square ones, not round ones. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyways, I cut those down. I cut them, I think like in half, maybe a little shorter than that. And now I am just hot gluing each piece around in all of the four corners on the wood plaque. Once I had those done, I added the top plaque or the top wood plank. I don't know why I keep calling it a plaque to the top of those four dowel rods. And now I'm just marking the center because I'm going to add three candles on top and I'm recreating a like candlestick holder, tapered candlestick holder that was from Hearth in Hand, so Joanna Gaines line. And I'm going to add three candlesticks instead of four, which hers had, but I didn't think four looked right on this size piece of wood. So I'm gluing the candles down on one right in the center and then the other two are going to go in the center of either side and I didn't realize until after I had already glued these on that the bottom part of the candle actually comes off so you can just remove that little small base part and you'll see me do that here in a minute and um, it would be easier to just glue it down that way instead of having the whole candle on top as well. So next I'm just taking some, it's like a faux black shiplap looking scrapbook piece of paper and I'm cutting down a small piece because I'm going to put that around the base of each candlestick. And now you can see in the um, top of the screen there that the candlesticks are no longer in there and you just see that little base part that they're held into. So next I'm going to glue, I cut these down to um, little like rings so that I could glue them around the bottom of the candlesticks because in the inspiration image I think it was made out of metal obviously I don't I can't make metal like this so paper works just fine and I love the way this turned out so um, now I'm just taking a couple tiny little pieces left over from that dowel rod and I'm gluing them to the bottom because the inspiration did have little legs on it. It was not flat against the, sur the ground or the surface or whatever you're setting it on top of. It, was, it did have little feet on it. So I'm adding those and then I just touch up the black paint where needed. So now it's time to decorate the inside. And I will tell you, I ended up taking out that little garland tie in the middle there. It looked too much like a bird's nest or something and kind of old fashioned. So instead I just use this eucalyptus, um, I add in some berries, and then I replace that greenery tie with some frosted fern. And I love the way that looks. Oh, I did keep in the pine cones as well. I'm taking a look at the inspiration compared to how mine is, oh, not just yet. I gotta add the candlesticks on top. <laughs> now we can see the inspiration was $25 compared to mine, which cost three because I had to buy the candles, candlesticks and I had everything else on hand.
for this next project, I am taking two of these boards from the Dollar Tree and just removing any of the little em embellishments on them. And then for my third board, I'm just using a scrap piece of floorboard that was in my garage. And I'm tearing all of the paper pieces off of these Dollar Tree ones. I do end up cutting them all down to be the same size, but here they're all different sizes. And then I'm going to take my um, Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm just going to put this on all three of my boards. The wood board that I got from my garage is a little bit of a different shade because it's not particle or not MDF like the Dollar Tree ones are, but I like the contrast and having two different shades. Then I just take my white chalk paint from Waverly and very lightly dry brush here and there, just giving it not really a distressed look. I don't know what you want to call it, but just adding a little something else to the wood. So now I'm going to draw on my little tree images. And this first one is going to be just like the triangle shapes of a Christmas tree. And it just gets a little bit bigger as you go down. You can see, find these, they're all over Pinterest right now. I know I've seen other creators make these um, tree boards as well. They're very popular right now and very easy and budget friendly to make yourself. So then after I got my tree how I wanted it, I took the bottom of three different size paintbrushes and I just added in some little like tree ornaments here and there wherever I thought it looked nice. And then I also added the star on top there. For this next tree, I'm just creating a line down the center and it's okay if it's not perfect. I really wanted this to have a very handmade look to it and I, I was okay with it not being perfect. So then I'm just creating like little swoop branches on this one and as we go down again, each little swoop is going to get a little bit longer and a little bit wider. There are so many different inspiration images of these trees on Pinterest. You could make them so many different varieties, whatever suits your decor style. And you don't have to use white paint. You could always use another color as well. So here I'm just touching it up. I thought I didn't want the um, ends of my branches to be come to a point. I wanted them to be a little bit fatter. So I'm just touching that up here. And for my last tree, I had, um, like, I don't know, it has that, that like wood slat tree look here. And at the top, I kind of thought that they were a little too close together. I had too many lines in there. So as I was going down, you can kind of see my pencil marks. I drew it out in pencil first. But as I was going down, I decided to skip some of those and just make them a little bit farther apart. And I'm just using a little detail brush for all of these and it worked out really well. So now I'm drawing the outline of a star on this one instead of, I don't know how I did on the last one, just it was more not filled in all the way, but how you would normally draw a star. And the last little touch for these, I took Baker's twine that is brown and white on two of my boards and then I took some jute twine on the third board and I just wrapped it around a few times, no rhyme or reason to this, to just add a little detail at the bottom and at the top. And here is the inspiration that was $98. That one is a lot thicker wood and mine only cost $2. And I'm adding in that I had to um, pay for the two boards that I got from Dollar Tree, so that's where the $2 is coming from, but realistically I had bought these a long time ago and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. So I guess we'll say it's $2, but it could have been free. And 
And for this next decor dupe, this one I think is my favorite. I am taking these hexagon mirrors that I just found at the Dollar Tree last week. And um, I'm taking the backing off. I didn't want to blind you guys by showing you the front mirror part, but I'm just taking the back off, um, unscrewing all of these little screws, popping that off, and we're gonna use just the frame part. You will see throughout this video, it changes from black to white because initially I bought these frames in white. I should have bought the black ones. I knew I was gonna wanna do this in black, but I bought white, tried to paint them, and then it, it, the paint was not sticking no matter what I did. I tried to use different glues, different poly, whatever, to try and get that glue to stick, and it just wasn't. So I went back. Thankfully, they still had plenty of these, and I picked up the black ones. So now I am just taking, I bought a two foot by four foot piece of wood from Home Depot, and this cost just under $5. You can also use those little wood planks that I was showing there for a second from the Dollar Tree. You would need one full pack for each frame that you wanted to make, and you just have to cut off a little sliver. So I use that as my guide of how thick I want the wood to be. And then I just cut it down. Now I'm using my Valspar um, antiquing glaze, and I'm going to stain all of my pieces. I do the front, the back, and all four sides. I also take, um, I think, two dowel rods from my variety pack that I got from Walmart. It is the smallest size in there, and I stain those as well. So now I'm going to take all of my pieces, and you can see here this was one that I had white and I had tried to paint it. I didn't do the inside because that's being covered by these wood pieces. And I just cut them down to fit perfectly inside each of the little hexagon lines and then I take a second frame and we put it right on top and I didn't glue any of this together I'm so happy that I didn't because like I said I ended up going back and actually buying the black frames because this paint was just rubbing right off like as soon as you touch it it was gone so now I'm taking my dowel rod that I had also stained and we're I cut them down to fit right across where the little seam is where the wood pieces meet cut them down with my little miter shears, and then I'm going to just hot glue those in place. And this is the only glue that I used for this project. And then I just wipe off any little glue that seeped out around there because I want it to have a nice, clean, finished look. And that's it. I added some um, command strips to the back. I added four strips to hang these up on the wall. I tried to hang them with nails at first, but then they fell. And that's when all the paint wrap, like really came off of the white ones. And so I redid it. But here is the inspiration that was $150. And I made all three of these for $10. I think that was a great deal and this turned out so cute. I'm debating if I want to make one more. I did buy eight frames, eight of the black frames, and then I still have six of the white ones. So I'll have to figure out something else to do with those white ones. All right, and these last three projects are just bonus videos because I wanted to get the I wanted this to be my last Christmas video so that we can start moving on to some other decor inspiration and home projects and whatnot but I'm taking this little sled from the Dollar Tree painting the top black and then the bottom rails white I think that's what they're called rails I don't know but you know what I'm talking about you can see where I painted and then I'm just taking these crisp or not Christmas trees but these tree ornaments from the Dollar Tree and I really love how modern these look they are so pretty at first I only used one, but I do go back and add a second one later on. And I just hot glue this one down in place, but I will tell you the hot glue really didn't hold. And I ended up going back and using super glue for this when I add the second one on. So now I have this black and white ribbon that I got from Walmart and I'm just creating a double bow with it. And I take some red ribbon to tie around the center to add that little red touch. 
along with the little sleigh ride ornament, uh, mini ornament that I got from Walmart as well. And I am trying to go a little faster through some of these because I have six projects to get through and I didn't want this video to be too crazy long. So I just hot glue my little bow up in the top corner there after I put the little sleigh ride sign on. So then I took this little like, um, mesh tubing I don't know what it's called from the Dollar Tree in the like silver color and I use that as my little hanger part or the rope that you would use on a sled to pull it and I just tied the knots in the front here and I cut off um, any of the excess and then just put a little dab of hot glue to hold these in place Now you can see I'm taking my, I forget, it's like CA glue or something. I can't remember what it's called, but um, what's her name? Ginger Chick Rehab. She uses this stuff a lot. And it has like a spray that is like an instant dryer of the super glue. And it has such a strong hold. But yeah, I ended up having to go back and use that to hold these trees on. And I just made the second tree a little bit shorter than the first. In this video, you can still see that Let It Snow at the top of the sled. I did go back and put some chalk paint. Initially I used just some house paint that I had, but you can only see it on the video and in pictures. You couldn't actually see it in person, which was really annoying, but I still love the way this turned out. It is super cute and modern looking to go with my decor this year. All right, next I'm taking two of these Tis the Season wood signs from the Dollar Tree and painting those white. And I'm using um, a homemade chalk paint here. And then I take some E6000 and a little bit of um, hot glue and glue those two boards together. So then I cut out with my Cricut the phrase, the most wonderful time of the year. And I keep telling myself I am not going to use those skinny cursive fonts. They look so beautiful, but they are so difficult to weed. I love the way this looks, but they are really hard to work with. Anyways, I put wonderful right in the center across um, both of the wood planks where they meet. And then I add in the most up to the top left and time of the year to the bottom right. Does anyone else have that problem? You can see on the wonderful how the E and then the F, they have those like solid black lines there or they're like filled in. And any, every time I try to weld my letters together after I had them where I wanted, it kept just filling those two spots in and I have no idea why. I, I No matter what I did, it wasn't changing and I wanted to have them welded together or it wouldn't have printed out correctly. So I don't know how to fix that. I think I might just have to like make it larger and then scale it down, but I'm not sure. And I'm also using my Target transfer tape. Again, I have not used that Cricut transfer tape since it was pulling my paint off. Um, I will probably try and use it again eventually, maybe on something that's more like wood stained and not painted but we'll see. So then I'm just taking my elephant gray chalk paint and I'm doing a very, very light dry brush with this, mostly on the edges and very, very tiny bit in the center. You can see how minimal that is on there. Very light. So now I'm just taking these bottle brush trees that I got from Walmart in various colors and sizes. 
and just placing them wherever I think they look nice, I ended up using five trees. And then once I have them where I think looks nice, I just hot glue the bottoms and that's it for this project. I think, again, this looks super modern, super classic and beautiful and goes really well with my home decor. This last project is um, a little bit of a vintage looking project. So I took this ornament sign from the Dollar Tree and I flip it over on the back and I am going to use that like candy cane looking striped vintage scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And don't be an idiot and do what I did. I traced onto the front of my paper instead of the back of my paper and you could definitely see my pencil lines. So use the back, not the front. But I cut this out and then just mod podged. Well, not yet. Sorry. I take the top, the topper, and I'm going to give it like a faux galvanized look. Normally, I don't make you guys watch me paint things, but I'm going to keep this in so you can see how I get the look. But I just have the first layer of black and you want to make sure each layer is dry before you go into the next. So I'm taking this Martha Stewart like silver very light gray color and just using my Dollar Tree stippling brush, stencil brush, to put that on. And here you can see I am drying in between every layer so that it's not blended together and it actually is layered. So next I'm taking Elephant Gray by Waverly and stippling that on. And the last color I use is white. I do end up going back a little later and adding a little more elephant gray. I thought I put a little too much white on there. And then now I'm just mod podging on the scrapbook paper. While we're waiting for that to dry, I'm taking the same stenciling brush and I'm stippling on some black to this piece galvanized sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and I don't cover the whole thing because I do want some of that silver to shine through and match the top of our ornament. So once my Mod Podge is dry I took some sandpaper and um, sanded off the edges this is the first time I've tried this, but I've seen so many people do this technique and it works really well. It just looks like the paper was always meant to be there and was part of the board rather than me having glued it down. Now I'm taking some E6000 to add on my piece galvanized word and I have it a little slanted in the center. Now I'm taking this um, macrame cord and I am wrapping it all the way around the side and then right across the top as well. I'm ridiculous with hot glue. I don't like anything to be shown, so I will pick those little pieces all off. The last thing I do is take my Ink Waverly chalk paint and I just take a little fan brush and rub it on and then smudge it in with my finger to give more of that vintage old look. Oh, and I added a bow with my macrame cord to the top. And here's how it turned out. I think this looks super cute, super like modern vintage if that makes sense. I don't know, that's what I was going for and I think I achieved that look. So that's it for this video today, guys. Let me know which of these projects was your favorite and are you ready to move on from Christmas DIYs? Because I know I am. See you next time.